Please be seated. Mera party. Mera party. Calling. 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 Please, please, please be seated. The, the the cavalry also escorting him so they are all just preparing to take their position and then the official procession will take place that in your short are the pub bearers the Dara party they actually carry the corpse or uh, the casket, yes. So that's a bearer party, and it consists of an officer, a warrant officer, or an NCO. And it's normally eight bearers. And the rank depends on the person that is being laid in state. And being a high profile uh, personality, we have been only warrant officers, class one and class two, to carry our ex president. So they are all just checking up and then we can officially start the procession. And you realize that the casket is draped in the Ghana flag. That tells you that it's a national burial. If we we could recall during the burial of uh, His Excellency Kofi Annan, when the casket was brought down, it was in the UN colors. And then the UN colors were removed and draped with the Ghana colors. So that is why the casket is also draped in our, uh, our, our flag, red, good, green. And now we have the, the poor bearers. They will escort the body as it moves. In some jurisdictions, the pallbearers carry the casket. So the pallbearers can play dual role. They can help in carrying the, the casket or escort it. In the Ghana Armed Forces, the pallbearers will escort it, whilst the bearer party carry the casket, as we are seeing now.
Right. And for those of you who are listening on radio, that is the Dead March uh, in Seoul being played right now as the Air Force officers bear the body of the former president atop their shoulders as they walk him to the vehicle that will take him on his final journey through the streets of Accra to his final resting place in Chadu. Everything has been rehearsed. And so every group in the procession know what they are supposed to do. So these have been rehearsed. It's a very solemn occasion. It's full of significance and pageantry. These are some of the unique situations around institutions. If you see situations like this, and you see how orderly it is moved, look at how the casket was lifted, and then look at how the... the, the They've even lifted their hands. Their hands. Mm -hmm. Everything has an indication that this is an organized, this is an organized uh, group. And it is so beautiful to, be, to and, see them. And then they all took off their head, their headgear, as a mark of respect all right. for what is happening now. Mm -hmm. I see that his hat and his sword are still on the on the casket. Exactly. At some point in time, it will be removed, right? Yes, eventually there will be at the cemetery. Okay. So even the wearing of the headgear, even the removal of the headgear, everything is rehearsed so it's so orderly. Mm -hmm. So that it looks very solemn and then professional. So Kafu, this is about the end Indeed. of former president Jerry Rollins has 73 years on okay. earth. This is the beginning of the closure of the 73 years. Because after a few hours, when the casket is put in the belly of the air, it means that he has finished his 73 years. And now the journey is up to this, from here to this moment. Then we have the firing party. They are also taking their position. At the cemetery, they will, they will be firing the volleys, the three volleys. So they are taking their position. And if, you see that they have reversed the weapon. Normally, we carry the weapon properly to fight. But we are mourning, so the weapon has been reversed. A sign of n no time for us to fight. For now, we are doing, we are giving every respect and every, um, yes, every respect to our former president. This is the police force. They are also adding uh, some uh, gymnastics to the whole program to make it very um, solemn and then entertaining, I and guess. entertaining yeah. at the same time. Even though it's not an entertaining occasion, yeah. so they're just adding something to what color, color to the whole program. Yeah. I saw a horse that had no rider exactly on it and i'm sure at the right time we'll you would tell me exactly what it yes, means you would yes do that. and that is a riderless horse a rod a horse without a rider you know our former president loved horse riding so today we needed to get that horse as part of the procession mm. for to tell the whole world that this is the uh, something a passion for our president that we have not forgotten that we wish to acknowledge it today so like you said at the right time i'll give uh, further details on that so it means, that, it means that now there is, they have started the journey from here to the cemetery exactly uh, that's the horse that's the riderless horse there. yes yeah. 
that's a riderless horse okay let me say something a little about it the riding boots have been turned to face backwards a rider wears a boot and face forward but okay let me now like to go through the order of procession once again we'll have the escort we'll have the firing party the band and the drum with the body on the carry uh, gun carriage with the pole bearers escorting it and then we'll have the insignia bearers we'll have chief mourners we'll have the president special representative and we have mourners in uniform in order of seniority then mourners not in uniform, then the rest, and then we have the rear detachment, as well as the motor cars. This is to ensure that every mourner knows where he or she must stand in the procession, to make sure that everything is orderly. So we have the cavalry, and then we have the motorcade by the police, the gun carriage. Officers with the sword. Yes. The sword has also been reversed. Normally, a sword is drawn vertically, but it has been reversed as part of uh, the mourning uh, process. So, they are the pallbearers. They are also there to provide extra security as well as escort the casket to the cemetery. And and because we are talking about the president and the commander in chief. These are high-ranking officers of a kennel, minimum a kennel and above. Commander Ahen, can you give us a sense uh, of... Just a minute, yeah. wrong. These ones are brigadier generals. Okay. Very, very senior officers. So they're brigadier generals. Is that what you refer to as a, a one-star general? That's a one-star general and above, and above. Because we are talking about the commander-in-chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. Can you just give us a sense of the route that will take for this procession, which will finally end up at the military cemetery? Okay. For those yes. who are just joining us right now, the funeral service is over, and there's a procession out of the Black Star Square. Where will they be going? All right. Uh, listening to the commentary on the ground, there's a slight change, but the original plan that I have here is from the Independence Square through to Osu Castle Road, then the Ridge Runabout, Kojo Thompson Road to Cycle, Nima Police Station, then to Gifford Road, through 37 to Bema Camp Road, Mahama Road, and then we'll branch off to the cemetery. So those are the major streets that the, the cortege will be uh, moving through before we get to the cemetery. And what is the significance of this procession through some streets of Accra. Thank you. You know that our president is a president of this nation. And it's impossible to have every Ghanaian come here. And so the procession is to allow for loved ones, one, to wave and to show their last respect. However, we also have what we call street lining. We'll have our personnel line the street that is going to be used to pay their last compliment to our commander in chief. Additionally, our former commander-in-chief also lived in some of these localities. So it's to afford the general public a viewing and also to say a farewell to all of us.
it's obvious that a lot of thought has gone into today's um, ceremony and it's, it's, it's rich with symbolism and significance exactly um, one thing with the military that every program that we undertake we take time to plan the minutest detail and we also have backups in case one fails another one is in now we have the Now we have the helicopter escort. Our president was a pilot, and so the helicopters are also there as part of the uh, escort uh, through to the cemetery. And so then the procession with the, uh, the soldiers along the line, sorry, along the route, that practice is known as a route lining the street lining and it has so many advantages one it tells the cortege exactly where they are passing it also provides security for the cortege as they move and will appeal to the public not to crisscross them allow the cortege to move through solemnly and at every point the 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 soldiers will pay the appropriate compliment as the cortege uh, passes by. This is one long, slow march to the cemetery. At a point in time, they will move into vehicles to make the movement a bit faster. Okay. I see the riderless horse leading the, the, the four other horses. And the dignitaries are now exiting the Black Star Square, bringing to an end the first part of today's um, ceremony. And the wreath bearers are also getting ready to carry the wreath to the cemetery. And I believe you agree with me that they also play a very significant role. We have people detailed for this, so that we do not get there and say, where are the wreaths? So everything is Things orderly. So they are also packing the wreaths. They will be put into a vehicle, and they will join the procession and send it to the cemetery. It appears that they are all air women. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, our, our commander, our former commander-in-chief was an air force officer, so it's just appropriate that we allow the air force to play that role. role yeah. But there are other roles where you have other, um, the army and the navy also playing some roles. And it's, it's an all-female contingent. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Well, he was very strong on gender issues as well <laughs> and giving women a chance to do their things. So. Yes. Yeah. And it was during his tenure that more and more women were also enlisted and recruited to the armed forces. So on a day like this, it's just appropriate that we feature both the men and the women playing their complementary roles in the Ghana armed forces. So I'm just curious though, how often is it that officers of this high rank get to march? You know, it's a lieutenant, uh, brigadier generals marching, it's, it's not a rare. It's not. It's, it's not a, a, a common occurrence, is it? it, it it's not. It's not a common occurrence because I, I think for the second time we are losing a commander in chief. Indeed. So it doesn't often happen Indeed. because where they have gotten to, they don't march. They don't. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they may under some circumstances. Mm. Maybe when there's a national parade, they may. Okay. But it's not something they do routinely. Indeed. From a brigadier general, no. Mm. So this is an exceptional occasion. Of course. And I see the flags are all at half mast for, 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 for today. Yeah. And that is a mark of mourning, state mourning or national mourning. So we are all in the state of mourning. And that is a street lining or route lining. So the personnel are all in the 
a, a solemn mood. Okay. The weapons stand downwards with their hands on it and their face downwards. They are all mourning. That is what it signifies. Kafu, you were you were talking about gender yes. gender role. Then I would want to draw your attention to the fact that Commander Veronica Ahen is a gender policy advisor to the office of the Chief of Defence Staff. So he is in the office of Lieutenant General Obed Guama Aba as a gender policy advisor. So it means the military is abreast of this and they know the role of women and making sure that they are not left out of it. So it should not surprise you that all gender carrying the wreaths. It doesn't mean that wreath carrying is for women. But this one, they said, look, this is a man, that wife was in charge of women's movement, 31st December women's movement. So if he is finished and the wife's tribute, she acknowledged the role, the support that got from Indeed. the former president. Mm -hmm. He said he gave me all the opportunity to go ahead and any time at all there were confusion around projects, when even others were saying that she was disturbing them in their regions, they said, you have my blessing, go ahead. And 31st December Women's Movement was a success. Mm -hmm. It created economy for women across the country. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to have uh, our commander here with us. On the bar, Veronica, and if I were an, a, a, in, in the army, I'd have been saluting her left, right, and centre. <laughs> yeah, but I can just give you a, a nod here for the good work you're doing here for us and instructing us, teaching us about some of these things, the traditions in the military that civilians would not know about. So I'm, I'm grateful to have you here. Thank you so much. It's an honour to say. But you know, the, the military, they just principled. You remember one thing that has just stuck in my mind. He said, you should know that this is a church. So stay where you are. If you don't know and you do, I will invite the military police around you. <laughs> so even in this environment, he wants to tell you that, look, you don't take it that it's a church hall or it's a church and so you can misbehave. Mm -hmm. He says, stay where you are. Don't cross. If not so, the military police will be invited around you and <laughs> I like the world around you. When the military police come around you, where will you pass? In trouble. <laughs> and that's the Armed Forces Central Band also displaying as part of the procession. I wouldn't normally associate the color pink with the army. So I was wondering who are these uh, men with pink neck scarves and they pink around them? They are five infantry of Battalion mm. at Bemakam, 5BN. I see. Yes. We have a lot of nice colors. Yes, yeah, so this, this is some serious <laughs> hot, hot pink, man. <laughs> hot pink in the army is great. <laughs> Commander, com com Commander Veronica, he says they have some very nice, nice colors. Yeah. Nice colors. I was pleasantly surprised, you know, <laughs> really? to, to see pink, hot pink yeah, on, that's five BN. on camouflage. Yeah, you know? That's 5BN. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think, I think it's, it's, it's therefore instructive that after all, uh, uh, we have now had an open day in, in, in the military. Mm -hmm. That we now open the barracks for civilian population to move in there. And they're starting with the kids. You know, when we were growing, kids were made to... Let me just cut in br briefly. Mm -hmm. We have the quad bikes, and these are also soldiers. And they are leading the procession. It's just to give additional security and protection mm. for the mm. funeral procession. And so either by the front, or the rear, or the sides, security is covered. Number one. F yes, for the procession. Please Our soldiers, soldiers, everything they do, they want to show you that we are force. Mm. If we want to, if we want to, if we want to show strength, we can show strength mm. at any point in time. Mm. You understand? And I was talking about this uh, open day at, at, the, uh, at the barracks. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, uh, Any time at all, anybody is misbehaving. You know, parents will tell you, police will come for you. Mm. So you create an impression that police are there to do something that is not that is not civil, uh, and that is untold. But we need to walk away from that and get children, even 
at their growing age, at their tender ages, they would want to be police. They would want to be soldiers. You see, because that is only at that time that we can get the human resource that we need. Now there's military, they have all the other professions in there. I agree. I agree. It's such a beautiful shot, you know, with the, with the independence patch and then all these uniformed uh, men and women marching, you know, very, very ceremonially. Yeah. It's a beautiful picture. So the 5 BN, they are the firing party that will be firing at the cemetery. Ah. They'll be firing the three volleys. Mm -hmm. So we'll see them also display there. Now we normally look at the color pink, a feminine color. Mm. We normally see the color pink as feminine color. And that is supposed to be love and kind. Mm -hmm. And then the 5 BN, that will be firing mortars at the cemetery, are using pink. Yes. It has nothing to do with the color. You know, so, but they will be at the cemetery to, to fire the 21 gun salute. No, they, no. they are firing the volleys. The 21 gun, gun salute will be fired by the artillery. They use heavy weapons. weapons. What you normally call weapon, uh, guns, we call them weapons. Those are the rifles. Mm. Those, uh -huh. those are oh, Yes, okay. so the personnel from 25 uh, BN will, will be firing the small rifles, rifles. and that is the volley. The volley. And then we will ah. have the artillery fire the 21 gun salute which is a salute for uh, only presidents. Mm. So that one is also different, but both will be happening at different times at the cemetery. At the cemetery. Yes. For a long time, President Rawlings operated from the castle. So it's, it's, the, 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 the procession is, is, is moving in the area of his, his former workplace, you know? So this is quite symbolic. Exactly. Yeah. If you just joined us, this is uh, the burial procession following the burial service for former President Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, which took place at the Independence Square, Accra. That has been done, and this is the journey that finally takes him to the military cemetery where his remains will be interred. And so the cortege is being taken through principal streets of Accra. They have just left the Independence square area and heading towards the Osu area. I can imagine those in story buildings coming out to take a look. And wave, and take, and take, and take pictures. Yes, and wave bye bye to the president for the last time. And this is his daughter's constituency. That is the daughter's constituency. Yes, indeed. Yes. Dr. Zanet Zanetto Rawlings. Yes, yeah. Clotte Colley constituency. So. The band is gradually filing off and then they will be conveyed with the vehicle eventually to the cemetery. And the fire party is still in the procession. And I'm Commander Veronica Ajo Ahen the gender policy advisor to the chief of the defense staff, and I'm in the commentary box with... Gabriel Busompem, and... Uh, my name is Kafui Day, Day. and I'm uh, learning a lot today and enjoying your company. <laughs> Commander, and uh, should I give you honorable? <laughs> Gabriel <laughs> Busompem. Gabriel <laughs> Busompem. It's enough, eh? Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> 
I believe uh, our former president has left a number of legacies, but one that I would like to touch on is service to our nation and service to humanity. We are at a time where people are in a hurry to get rich overnight. They are not ready to sacrifice a little for the nation. If for nothing at all, let's all remember that Ghana is the only country we have, and we have to do everything possible to ensure that it develops. It creates an environment that we can all be proud about. So let's die a little for our nation. I'm urging the young one there there's a need for us to save rather than to wait to be saved. And like the preacher said, he said, a son of man did not come to be saved, but to save. It's now up to you and me to make sure we give off our best to our motherland. It is, it is extremely sometimes worrying to see any time at all you would want to get people involved to do even communal labor. The question is, how much are you giving me? Mm -hmm. How much am I taking? And so you even see that even in our community levels, community, commun communal labor is dead. Communal labor is dead. And it, there is nothing for free. And almost everyone is saying nothing for free. But you can also develop a country on the particular tracks. Look at the man we are going to put to rest in a few hours' time. Look at the service. When he was even head of state, he was seen carrying cocoa sacks. He was carrying cocoa. He was digging trenches. He was, he was helping in building rail lines. And almost everything that he did, you can see him with his singlet, his, his military uniform top removed, his boots, trousers, and singlet sweating and doing the work. And sometimes you can even see people standing by and watching. I remember the last time that he cleaned, it was, um, he, he went to Nima to clean, to, to help clean Nima. And whilst he was in the drains, dirtying his hands and cleaning, the people from Nima had come out and were standing there watching. And sometimes you look at this, said what? I think he has left sometimes, he, he became so human. Because this is a time that they, you, those standing watching, you bring articulator tracks, push all of them in, and take them to the field to go and work, to learn sense, you see. But he became so democratic, because at the beginning, we saw people being afraid, and so there was a calm down, and now getting people to move. So the cavalry just paid compliments to the caskets as it moved past them. I think viewers, at a point in time, you can see that your picture quality is dropping and they're freezing. It is because of use of the helicopter and then communication interferences. These are things that technology would always have to visit on us. But as they get to where the, the communication systems are stable, you get them. And when the chopper is not interfering with this flying part, then the, the signals will come in. So if you are, it is not your TV set that, is, that has a problem. So don't adjust your TV set. Don't touch your TV sets. It is because of the helicopter, use of the helicopter, and the, and the communication interferences that is creating this. And the quad bikes are in the shots again, and they are manned by personnel from 64 Infantry Regiment, one of the units created by our former president. And so they are all here to give their last support and respect. You know, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the 64 actually stands for June 4th, right? Is that correct? Sixth month, fourth day, 64. Yeah, so, quite interesting. And one very prominent individual that you can always remember around June 4th was Kendall Bevelolat.
So the noise we hear overhead is the helicopters, helico helicopter escorts flying yes. around. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You know, I was just flipping through the brochure. A lot of tributes and messages of condolence from really big people. But there's one simple poem from somebody who just called Village Boy. And, and I wanted to share it with you. It's a simple poem. I don't know who Village Boy is, but I like the words. It says, many were not able to say goodbye. Close family did their best, but little did they know God saw a different path and beckoned. Suddenly, a national hero has fallen. A family has lost a husband, father, and brother. God has called. You gave us your best, but did we remember to thank you enough for the many years you held Ghana together and for teaching us by your example the value of modesty good judgment and compassion. Some of us forgot to show enough gratitude. We do so now, hoping you would hear us, for your presence in our lives meant more than we ever knew. God now has you in his keeping. We have you in our heart. It was an honor to have you. A journey has now ended to the grave you now travel. Personal and national flowers placed with care Hearts remain broken as dear ones turn to leave you there. Many hands are pressed into molding a nation. Yours, an indelible impression. Ordinary people drafting the constitution of the Fourth Republic, a firm resolve, patriotism, discipline, and moral strength. Selflessness, probity, accountability, and integrity. Your mark will live on still rest in perfect peace and this is your presence in our lives meant more than we ever knew by village boy and this village boy is really instructive the village boy is really on point <laughs> let's see and this is what we should all learn as a people to carry on with if not so it would just mean that there's the strong politician had come to waste his time. And I don't think it should be anything near he has come to waste his time. It is, it, it's, it's a track he laid, a track he followed, and he made sure that he got along with us. He didn't do it alone. He made sure that he did it with us. And if we believed in what he did with us, then it is time that we would, should continue with whatever we started with him. Then, at that point, we can say that the country Ghana has a brighter future. A rundown at, uh, of the part two at the cemetery. On arrival at the cemetery, the blessing of the grave will be undertaken by Most Reverend Gabriel Edwe Kumoji. He is the Bishop of Keta Akachi Diocese. Then the sentences will follow, and then we'll have the committal and prayer. Then we'll have the firing of the volley which I spoke about not too long ago. We also have the 21 gun salute and two minutes silence to be followed by the Rivoli presentation of Insignia as well as the last post. And so stay glued to your TV and watch the cortege as it moves through some principal streets of Accra.
For those of you who are tuned in on Joy 99.7 FM, this is uh, the Joy News' coverage of the final journey of the fl uh, former president of Ghana, Flag Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. A path has been mapped out for the cortege which will travel through uh, several principal streets of Accra, the capital city in which he presided over the nation's affairs for a couple of decades. Now, as the procession made up of police and several branches of the military bear his mortal remains through these principal streets, currently uh, they are driving around the Black Star Square, uh, heading into Osu, uh, past the um, past the stadium and making their way towards Ridge from where they will travel uh, down Kojo Thompson Road into Circle and then from Circle make their way through several other principal streets as they head towards Burma Camp 37 uh, and Burma Camp beyond which and they will are also make a stop um, at the armed forces, uh, sorry, the Air Force headquarters in Burma camp. And then they will come back out and make their way down the new road to Chado, where the armed forces cemetery is. And that will be his final resting place. All of these spots are chosen for their significance, no doubt, the significance of Ridge is not lost on anybody. The former president for many years had his residence there. Uh, in, in the final years of his life, that residence was converted into an office where his team worked from daily. And of course, from Ridge, they will go through Kwame Nkrumah Circle and make several other stops before stopping by 37 military hospital again significance does not need to be explained as a military man uh, 37 military hospital was one of the significant landmarks um, which existed and operated during his time from there to burma camp to the air force and then from there they make the turn onto the new road past the statue of Maxwell Mahama, another fallen soldier, to the final resting place of the late, nay, the great Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. And of course, the people of Accra will have the opportunity to pay their final respects as the body of the former president is driven past their location and already you can see people lining up on the sides of the road waving and standing solemnly as the cortege passes by there is a full military accompaniment to this cortege including aircraft in the sky helicopters all bidding farewell to the former president and they are all providing escorts for the cortege. Oya 
We're still bringing you the live coverage of the very final journey of the former president of the Republic of Ghana, the late Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, who passed away last year after a short illness. And of course, as the nation remembers him, as his family say, uh, final farewell to him. The entire city is brought pretty much to a standstill by this procession of police and military and all other uh, armed forces as they take him uh, along the principal streets of Accra to his final resting place. There will be uh, a short ceremony at the cemetery in Shadow before he is finally uh, laid to rest. There will be the blessing of the grave. Uh, there will be some scriptures read, some hymns. Uh, then, of course, uh, Most Reverend Gabriel Edokumoji, uh, Bishop of Keta Kachi Diocese, will uh, perform the committal and prayer. It's a military funeral, so there will be firing of guns by the Ghana Armed Forces. And, um, of course, that will be followed by the reveal, uh, which will be uh, the horn section of the Ghana Armed Forces presenting that. Uh, there will be a presentation of insignia um, and a vote of thanks by a member of the family. Then, Most Reverend Gabriel Edokumoji, once again, Bishop of Keta, presiding at the gravesite, will... Uh, conduct the prayer and benediction. Uh, the Ghana Armed Forces Band will be in attendance. They have uh, left the Black Star Square and are currently heading towards the final resting place of the former president, which is the um, military cemetery in Chadu, where they will once again set up their columns to perform as uh, the dignitaries arrive. But right now, the former president making his way through the principal streets of Accra, bidding his final farewell to the city he called home for pretty much his entire life. And um, of course, there are Ghanaians who feel some final sense of connection with the casket as it passes by, and of course, it's uh, revered remains. And so traffic has started to form on the opposite lanes as people observe with some solemnness uh, this final journey of the former President Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. Uh, there are those who are following the procession with bicycles and motorcycles, just ordinary Ghanaians who want to feel some part of this historic event, sad as it may be. It's undoubtable that every Ghanaian alive today owes something to the former president. And that something may be good or bad, depending on what your experience may be, because he was a man of two sides, a man whose legacy has two halves. As Mark Twain says, like the dark side of the moon, we all have two halves. The former president, a Gemini, born in June, for those of you who believe in um, horoscopes, certainly uh, is expected to have two halves, like all people, the good and the bad. And today, as he, walks, uh, as he makes his final journey, he rides for the last time through the capital city of his country, Ghana, uh, his good side shines the brightest as people remember his legacy and what he has left to us as Ghanaians. <laughs> 